Blessed are those who live out their dreams. That's the difference between listening to the knock on the door and going and answering. God, that was great. <laughs> What a glorious place to be. It's been called one of the hardest climbs on planet Earth. The shark's fin of India's Mount Maru stands 21,000 feet above the Ganges River. The mountain has defeated many who tried to reach the summit, but it remains irresistible for some of the world's toughest climbers. How do you think you're gonna die? I don't know how I'm gonna die. <laughs> I hope it's not in a car accident, because <laughs> I'm a pretty horrendous driver. I guess I'm not overly concerned. I just, I just hope it's not, you know, a stupid human mistake, some kind of pilot error, where it was a, a risk that was, I didn't even know it was coming. There we go. First view. Pretty exciting. Here. Is this your first time in Yosemite? It is, actually. Yeah, ours yeah. too. Oh, yeah, nice. We just got here yesterday. Okay, yeah. so I've done some climbing and some hiking. Oh, nice. Yeah, he used to sleep under the boulders and in the prairie 15 years ago. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Their bag life. Fun. Yeah, oh, yeah. a couple of that, of that type. Yeah. yeah. I am uh, a dirt bag at heart. I was about 20 years old when I first came here. I think it was a, just a road trip when I was in college. I was uh, studying science at the time and seeing not only this place, but other national parks like Joshua Tree, Canyonlands, Utah. And I gave away all my belongings and uh, just hit the road with a duffel bag and a backpack, just hitching rides from friends. And this is one of the places where I, I came back to and spent a lot of time. We're in uh, Camp 4. It's one of the only campgrounds in the U.S. that's a national historic site. And this is pretty much the birthplace of climbing in America all happened out of this campground. This boulder in particular, the Columbia Boulder, Midnight Lightning, has a lot of history on it. Feels good to be back. It's like a homecoming. Yeah. I don't get to come back that often these days. Usually it's sort of a film project. What makes her non-special is the fact that he's an artist who can also climb different places, different ways. It's like a very specialized skill set to be able to move around the mountains and climb and be safe and have these amazing experiences, but to also be able to like bring that back to people and like share the experience and to document it in a beautiful way and to really convey just how amazing those places are. Without Yosemite, my life trajectory would have been completely different. I just had blind faith to come to places like this and other national parks when I was young and that pretty much started the domino effect that's led me to do a lot of different interesting things that I never could have expected. So a lot of that I have to thank Yosemite for, just for the type of culture that lives here and the dreams that it instilled in me and the skills that it gave me. I'll never have done what I wanted to do here. There's always more. It's an endless resource. You just come to Yosemite with a hope and a dream and just chip away and see what's possible. I have my sunnies, harness, shoes, and ready for a mad scramble. We literally just got here 12 minutes ago and we're running up the mountain. It's great. Royal Arches, it's a 17 pitch climb. This is the this is one of the most famous first climbs ever done. And uh, we're gonna practice moving as fast as we can. Most people would do this thing like early in the morning, there's like people guiding it, or um, they just kind of do it on their days off. We're gonna be tied to each other. Yeah, we're gonna be doing a little simul climbing, so both moving at the same time, kind of relying on each other not to fall. Um, Any 
anything that I need to know about falling and catching and um mostly not to fall. <laughs> you got it. When you're climbing the rocks, you recognize all those little macro details that you wouldn't normally realize if you were just driving through as a tourist. You're up there alone on the wall, and sometimes the difference between falling and breaking your leg or having one of the best climbing days in your life is recognizing some little tiny crystal on the wall and putting your foot on it and trusting that. I was really close to death a few years ago smashed my skull and also smashed a few vertebrae in my neck and there's a millimeter from slicing my spine and then a millimeter from puncturing and bleeding out in the brain. We were chasing two of the best big mountain snowboarders in the world and filming in the Tetons and I just caught an edge. It's like tripping, running across the street. It can happen anytime to anybody and I just happened to be over a cliff it came right down on my head, pencil dive right into a rock. And then I, I came to as they were carrying me out in a stretcher, shivering uncontrollably with the oxygen mask over my face. Then it was, you know, months of recovery and neck braces and hobbling around. I've had friends who've been in accidents where they've reconsidered their whole life and what they've done. But for me, the accident was less emotional than it was if I was conscious for the whole thing. The Rock teaches you to open your eyes and pay attention to the small details, not only the wide view. Okay, I'm gonna scramble up there. Okay. You're just gonna wedge yourself in there. It's kind of slippery because so many people do it. Pitch one. 16 to go. Getting high above the valley floor now. Wow. Yeah, working those feet into those cracks. A little bit better this time. Nice. Not so much uh, just suffering my hands. Hands are getting a little beat up. Not too bad. I'll survive. You know, this kind of climbing is interesting because even though you're tied to someone else, you're alone when you do it. There's a bit of solitude that's really hypnotic. It's just beautiful. Look behind you. That's beautiful. As soon as he gets that rope tight, I'm gonna climb up here. I think we're, we're uh, trying to get to the top before the sun sets. And then we'll hike down in the darkness. Renan, he's pretty much free soloing most of this uh, climb. This is the Tarzan swing. You're not pushing yourself just a little bit. It's not really climbing to me anyways. I don't shy away from putting myself in those situations time after time. It's what makes life fun and it's what creates good art. So you have to embrace it and uh, doesn't doesn't make it any easier when you when you lose friends. I definitely got even just a little emotional just being in um, El Portel where we were just sleeping last night because that's you know, our friend Stanley lived in El Portel. And uh, being back here, we're spending time with all these characters. And just in the past month, three of them are dead. And it's, it's around us all the time, and it could happen any time. And... As climbers, you know, we're around it. We're around death quite a lot. In some ways, going out kind of in the height of your life, experiencing this world and in this way that you love so much and dying in the middle of that, there's beauty in that. <sighs> 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 
everything in life has some kind of risk associated with it. Even not doing anything carries, you know, a greater risk of heart disease and cancer. I mean, everybody dies eventually in life. It's more a matter of, like, how you lead your life to get there, I guess. So this is the last pitch. Okay. We're traversing that slab right there, right to that trail. Jesus Christ. Up and over. Some of the scariest parts were the slabs. You're just walking. There's no place really to put your hands, so you're just sliding across. You're the slab master. <sighs> Fuck! That's good. Oh. 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 It's like almost nice. in trust and mud. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That was really cool. Oh, God, that was great. You do all the thinking. I'll never forget that. Seeing the sun set on the half dome. I can't believe you motherfuckers climbed that. It's incredible. Alex has climbed it without a rope. <laughs> I can't believe that. We gotta talk to him. It? This says it all right here. <laughs> this was a hat. Yeah. Now it's a very painful G string. 